A warm welcome to my garage workshop. Today I will show you an alternative DIY solution for these hard to reach area milling extension shanks. These ER16 shanks visit my milling machines regularly, but sometimes they are too big and clumsy for the task, and something lighter must be used. The ER11 shanks and collet sets cost next to nothing, but I haven't grown to like them much. While the ER16 collet snaps on and off easily, and the printed size numbers are readable, the ER11 collets are horrible to use. The runout is somewhat variable, and the shanks I have are quite frontish. The size numbers are terrible, and the collets are very hard to identify by eye. I have found these ER11 shanks being most useful for hand drilling in tight places. Now I must take you back in time some 20 years. Here you can see young Kerkko trying to make a classic mini run louder and consume more gasoline. In order to gain rough idle, I did some cylinder head porting. For the task I had this cheap die grinder. But to ruin the ports all the way, I had to make some extension for the shaft. Now I decided to use a similar tapered thread chuck for end mill extension shanks. In order to get best possible runout for the shanks, I changed my decal type collet holder to the lathe. I used case hardened shaft so I took a ceramic insert for the turning. Mildly steel would be fine too, but this is what I had on my hands. Next the compound slide is roughly set to 1.8 degrees. The threading die will later correct minor errors in the taper angle. But if you are a keen dial indicator user, the 1 to 16 taper ratio means that on 16 whatever units of length, the taper wind as one unit in the diameter. Looks like I just got past the hardened portion of the shaft. The correct start dimensions for the taper threads are impossible to find, but I will put my drawings with tested dimensions to the CrabCut service, if you are interested to make your own. Now pay attention if you are new to pipe threads. They come with two variations, straight and tapered. And of course there are two common standards for these, British and American. Both will you just fine here, as long as you don't mix them together, and they have a T as last letter. Usually the markings of the die are at the bigger end of the taper, in other words the start side of the die. I will put this end first to the wrench. Then I place a steel guide bar in the tool post. and the drill chuck's flat nose gives support when starting the treading. I hand cranked the spindle until my stock and the die were flush. There isn't much sense going any further with a tapered thread die. Then I started making the bore with a center drill. Then bored with slightly undersided drill. For perfectly true running bore, I used a small boring bar insert. Now 
I could have made the final size with the boring bar too, but it was easier with the H7 reamer. The fit with the desired end mill should feel something like this. Then I took a standard nut and bought the original threads away. I don't have the taper reamer for these threads, so I used the boring bar to adjust the bore. Then I tapped the bore carefully not to go too deep. I tested several times the depth with my tool shank until I was happy with the result. Then I placed the shank with the nut together back in the lathe and rounded slightly the edges of the nut. I made three of these shanks with different sizes on both ends. Stock and thread sizes can be found in the drawings. There's a link in the description. Next I took a 1mm thick slitting saw and split it the threaded portion. The smaller shanks were split to four slices. A square ER collet block was great help here. The larger shank was split to six slices by a ER hex block. The slitting saw burr was reamed away. Here's now the family portrait of my new shanks. Uh, and the 10mm bore was just too much for the quarter inch pipe thread. The use of this chuck is pretty straightforward. Insert the end mill and tighten the nut. Over tightening can stretch the nut or rip off the slices. Now we can test the performance of the shank. According to various sources on YouTube, the ER collet's runout can be adjusted by hitting the nut and rotating the tool or collet in relation to the holder. I managed to reduce the shank's runout to bearable level. And the actual tool runout was almost the same. The through bore allows the use of these almost infinite length end mills and could be useful if I had through spindle coolant system. I have used this car sound deadening material to reduce resonances in long boring bars. And it should work fine with this extension shank too. This beautiful material has aluminium foil top surface and adhesive backing. There are several brands of this stuff, but the one I have here claims to be Russian military technology. I don't recall these Soviet-made trucks being particularly luxurious in terms of passenger comfort. I used to ride these during my obligatory military service in mid-90s. But the matting is very easy to apply and later remove. And it's soft enough not to make any scratches on your precious work part. Now I have a 1mm end mill with about 100mm length from the ER collet and a piece of aluminium for a test part. Now hold on a second. What's the sense of testing a hard to reach area extension shank when there is no vicious object to avoid hitting? Let's bring my lovely assistant Barfi to assist on this matter. <laughs> 